Hello, and welcome to Filling in the Gaps. I'm Justin. I'm Dara. Here on Filling in the Gaps, we like to discuss mind-bending movies and puzzle games, and today we have a point-and-click adventure from Joe Richardson. We are looking at the sequel to Four Last Things, which is The Procession to Calvary. Yes, not cavalry, Darren. <laughs> which he keeps typing <laughs> and saying to me, yes. Developed by Joe Richardson, published by Joe Richardson, and Super Hot Presents. Yeah, yeah, Super Hot. They, uh, they, because they did so well with their own indie jam, they, they, they decided to give a lot of love back to the little communities and stuff. It's fantastic. That is fantastic. And though the games are completely different. <laughs> yeah, don't expect any super hot action in this. It is kind of fitting in the fact that I think Four Last Things was a very unique indie hit. Super Hot was a very unique indie hit. Mm. Pair up. Yeah, opposites attract. This game is from April of 2020. I think you played it right away. I jumped on it right away, man. Yeah, pretty much. I waited for a while, I think just until there's a 50% off, something like that. It's $10 at base, which is a little expensive considering how long to beat has it at about three and a half hours to completionist. I think that's a little low. Yeah. It always is. <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless they really solve it that easily. But there were some things that I just didn't see I could click on. Yeah. Or some very point click logic that I didn't put together. Even me this time, I was like, I've got, all, I, I've, I have the walkthrough, and the walkthrough is like, oh, just walk around and get the key. I'm like, where's the window? I can't get the key. But I'll be jumping on uh, Death of the Reprobate when it comes out. It might be, it might even coincide with when this gets released. So when it says is it's it? this year. Okay, so as we're recording this now, three months to go. Three maybe? months to go. Yeah. So could be, could mm. be. That'd be great. Yeah. Will I jump on the next one? Possibly. I mean, the $10 space is always a bit... It's worth it as far as it's a well-put-together game. Funny. Funny, enjoyable, short, which means that I'm much more likely in the future to play it again. Yeah, I went back and scooped up 100% achievements this time as well. I, I saw you did too. I did. I finished that up last night. Yeah. I did use a couple walkthroughs. There's only two guides on Steam. One is about achievements, and I do like that one because most of it's hidden behind that spoiler black wall. Yeah. Whereas the other one, written by Joe Richardson. Yeah, exactly. You can't exactly write a guide and go up against the guy who made the game, can you? No one's going to drop a guide now. And it's so succinct. Yeah. <laughs> do this, 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 this. You want this one? Do this, this, this. It's really well written. Yeah. <laughs> and you'd, you'd imagine it would be by the guy that wrote the game. <laughs> it's so good. And it reminds me a bit of Rusty Lake. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, yeah, Samsar yeah. Room has a video they put up of, here's how you beat it. Yeah, they've got, they know exactly where you are in the game. And then so when you click on hint, it'll take you to a video for that puzzle you're trying to solve. They're really good about it. That's fantastic. And I think that that is part of how... Joe Richardson shows he's part of the community. Mm. He's not just dumping the game. He's also like, well, here, here's a walkthrough. I know everything about the game. Here it is. Yeah. As far as reviews on Steam, recent 19, very positive. Overall, 569, overwhelmingly positive. I think a lot of people who are getting this one, they got the first one. They know what they're in for. Yep. I would love to see for the third one to come out and have a trilogy bundle. Mm. Is it going to be part of the same universe? I'd imagine so, because um, what's his name from the first game is in it. So, I mean, yeah, there seems to be some kind of recurring theme. It's point and click. It's fun. You would, again, probably say this is very Monty Python-esque. Now stand aside, worthy adversary. It is but a scratch. As yeah. far as the humor style. I definitely recommend it. Especially if you like the first one. This one is, in some ways, a continuation, but feels very different. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I, I'm, on, I'm on the fence, kind of like, is this better than Four Last Things? Four Last Things seemed longer to me. Um, and it was really original when it came out. So this is like more of the same, but it's also got something, it's got a certain charm for it in this one as well. It's got something a little bit different. I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it. Well, one thing is... 
the main new mechanic that I'm going to get into, but <laughs> that's a huge spoiler as to what you can do with the game. I think if you like this, if you even just watch the trailer and it looks funny to you, get it. Yeah, and if you like classical Renaissance art, get it, because it's beautiful to look at and walk around inside all these amazing paintings. And just the way he's manipulated them and animated them is yeah. pretty brilliant as well. I think that this one looks a little better. I think that it flows a little better. I seem to remember there weren't as many panning shots where the artwork was kind of linked together. It was more screen to screen in the first one, four last things. This one has more fluidity between the scenes. It's yeah, a lot more care. You will run into things like point and click logic, which <laughs> at times will probably make the player go, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> Why does that work? <laughs> but what it always does well is for me, it is always fun. And fun will out trump anything else. And this was just nonstop fun to the point where, minor spoiler, there are three endings. So <laughs> you can play through to get your three endings. But with that, I think we're going to start spoiling like crazy. So I recommend it. I definitely do. And with that, if you do not want spoilers or if you've already played The Procession to Calvary, well, join us in the spoiler section. <laughs> We begin by looking at a building in the menu, and as soon as you click New Game, an arrow flies into a window and the building catches on fire, and then just a non-stop bloody rampage <laughs> of our character running through and beheading and stabbing and everything, <laughs> until we get to the initial screen where we can actually play. And there are two guys there telling us to stop. The holy war is over. Freedom for all. And our character says, uh, but I don't have the freedom to kill more people. <laughs> the dialogue in this one is just fantastic. Uh, for now, I'm just going to refer to our character as the knight. Mm -hmm. uh, she's very unhappy about that. She's told to talk to immortal John. We are going to leave the field marshal and the lieutenant general. They're the ones there. Every time you try to kill anyone, I'm like, wait, stop. We no, told you not no to. No killing. <laughs> We're also going to leave the brass band playing Stars and Stripes Forever by John Philip Sousa, which feels a very <laughs> odd choice of song for this game and this setting. But I love the fact that every time you click on the musicians, it tells you the composer, and the title. Yeah. No needing to look up any of this. No needing to use an app. Oh, what song is that? It's there in the game. Yeah. And with each musician, you can sort of sing along in text. Right. Strum diddy strum <laughs> for like a guitar one. Banging on your shield and saying bravo. Bravo, yeah. You cannot kill them, though. No, unfortunately. Can't kill them. <laughs> now let's kill that band i can do that every time you try to it will say they're not that bad yeah, <laughs> yeah we have to leave the field marshal lieutenant general and pass by death who is beheading a corpse very slowly <laughs> and the cutting off with like a pen knife or something like that. and never ending yes the game as i said will not allow me to kill anyone yet there is a hanging corpse off to the left that you can grab a pair of scissors from which is right. very useful though my first playthrough i did not do that i'm going to talk about my first playthrough it's very tied to the mechanic of the fact that you have a sword so yeah. my first playthrough i just killed everyone yeah the game's telling you hey don't kill anyone and you're like mm, nah it's way easier. Yeah, yeah, it is. I did my I did my serial killer achievement last night. It took me six minutes. <laughs> I just ran through murdering everybody. Pretty much mine as well because I had to start over. All my saves were after I did the beginning part. And I think killing the cripple we're going to see in a minute is the trigger possibly. Or maybe there are a certain number that you have to get. I don't know how many, but I killed I killed six, and it started with the guy with the oars, yeah. Using the oars as, like, crutches. And I'll be having those, and then it all went downhill from there. Yeah, because I don't think that it could be six, because I definitely killed six 
my first run through and I didn't get didn't it. Didn't get it. So I think there are certain ones that perhaps you have to take out. Right. Did you kill the gatekeeper? The first time, yeah. Yeah, that's brilliant. Look at my big key. Hey, look at my big sword. <laughs> <laughs> With the beginning part, you pass by, well, you have to talk to Immortal John, who is the protagonist from the first game, and even says so in the conversation. Hmm. I was once a protagonist like you. Yeah. I rallied the people together. We're all working for the better of humankind. But who did you vanquish? Heavenly Peter. Oh, but you didn't kill him? No, he's just gone. But it'd be easier if things were... <laughs> it'd be easier if he was dead, right? Well, <laughs> I mean, this is not exactly the way it went, but it's basically our character saying, there's one more person I can kill. Yeah. <laughs> and like, all right, I'll do it. He's like, well, I didn't actually say that. It's like, well, all right, bye, mission accepted. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're going to sprint by what was the cathedral in the first game, which is now a field hospital. You're going to get to a boatman who says, well, I'm just in a little boat. I can't take you all the way there, but I can take you to this other boat that will take you to another boat that will get you there. The naked guys are still wrestling. Always, forever. <laughs> Immortalized. So here's where you have two options. You can... Talk to all the people at the field hospital mm -hmm. and encourage them to vote for you. I believe the achievement is something like destroying democracy or something. <laughs> you basically have to talk to them and find out what their issue is. The guy with no shoes, you can't help. There's nothing I think that you can do for that one. But the soldier who's depressed, if you pat him on the head, then he will vote for you. Yeah. And then the other one is a woman with <laughs> a man lying in her arms. What is his problem? Oh, his hair is too long and it gets in his eyes. So sad. That's why we're waiting for weeks to get into the field hospital. Yeah. <laughs> so if you give her the scissors, she can cut the hair. Yeah. You talk to the cripple, mm -hmm. as I believe it's labeled in the game, and... He's using the oars yeah. as crutches. You say, hey, can I borrow those oars? And he said, well, let's put it up to a vote. So if you don't do it correctly like I did the first time, I had the scissors. I don't know why I didn't think to use them. Mm. I think I just wanted to kill somebody. <laughs> yeah, having that sword was too tempting. Yeah. So if you do kill him with the sword, every time you kill someone, lightning strikes you and you have your skeleton silhouette very cartoon like if you do it the nice way then he puts it up to a vote and you get two-thirds so you get to take the oars with you and he apparently has to crawl through the muck home yeah thanks for that the the, the guy with no shoes you give him the pair of socks uh, there's a pair of socks by the wrestlers is there yeah i looked at the clothes and you can't pick them up. The game does this quite a lot, actually. It kind of gates stuff off from you. It won't allow you to do something until you've triggered something else. So when you first look at the clothes, it's like, oh, no, I'm all right. I have, an, I have fine clothes. But when you talk to that guy, he's like, I've got no shoes. Then you go back to the socks. You can steal them. And then you give them to the guy. Okay. So because you can get like a three for three. I, because I kept clicking on all the pieces of clothing mm. and they said, no, you no. can't pick that up. All right. That's good to know. But it's also good to know you only need two out of three. So that's how democracy works. <laughs> save, <laughs> save yourself from going to the other screen and back again. But losing dialogue, it's not good enough, man. You got to get all the dialogue. <laughs> Great, I'm gonna play it a fourth. Time. Yeah, man, get in again. <laughs> With the oars, you can get onto the boat. First, you have to cut the rope so that you can. Our character says, prepare to be boarded. <laughs> yeah. Then you get a montage of our character in a slightly bigger rowboat, then onto a sailboat where they're being tossed about at sea. Then there's a part where after arriving, our character is running and then doing something else. And then it eventually ends up on the back of a donkey yeah. with a woman and baby mm -hmm. we have to stop because the cart full of shells has a broken wheel but is conveniently right where we need to be 
Yeah. Which is said in the it's said in the dialogue. I was a little annoyed here just that there is this statue mm-hmm. of Heavenly Peter and we can't do anything with it. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know, especially since you trained me from the last game to like interact with statues and change them. It's like, nope, nothing nothing this time. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take out my aggression on the real thing. Mm. There is the gatekeeper, as you said before, who says, look at my massive key. And the other lady who's about five times She's gigantic, yeah. <laughs> normal human size. And they'll say, no, you can't get in without a visa. Where do you get a visa? It's in town. So, of course, <laughs> bureaucracy, you can't do the thing you need to do. Yeah. Two options here. Go for the kill. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Or not. They will kick you out first, so the shell lady will say, oh, no, I'm not going to deal with a murderer. Your reputation precedes you. And in fact, as soon as you kill anyone, the the game triggers a few different things where it locks off a bunch of things once you're a killer. We're going to get into that when we get into the next section, but that's kind of what I did. I went back to talk to them and killed the guard. And the other one, the huge lady, said, well, I'm not going to stop you then. <laughs> Go on in. <Woo-hoo. laughs> now, I did explore around, but it's not really important for the first playthrough because all you really need to do is go through. All the doors are now locked. If you knock on them, they say, we're not opening for a murderer. You go to the ferryman who says, oh, you need a boat pass to cross. How do I get one? I don't know. Uh, you'd think that'd be important for you. <laughs> yeah, but I've just never bothered to look into it. All right, then. Chop his head off. <laughs> Chop his whole body off. Don't you? I think you need to lop him off at the waist. <laughs> Steal the boat, go across, and inside the basilica, you have the cardinals that will stop you from getting in, each with an animal. Yeah. There's also a little lion that you can pet on the floor. Yeah, that's right. And there's two scholars off to the side. If you... Kill the scholars. I think the cardinals say they're still not scared, but you can kill one more. And then the one on the right says, okay, I am scared. Go in. You pass by an angelic choir. You get into a room where the organist goes, a one and a two. And it starts playing. The game will pan up to an open area of the dome. And there are two characters there. One said, oh, she's so awesome. And the other one was like, she's killed a lot of people. And the other one said, yeah, I know, but it's very rare we get strong female leads. I admire her. And the other one said, yeah, but we have to tell the guards. And and the other one said, yeah, I know, but I'll stone a lot of those guards at the execution. (laughs) It was a funny way to use basically the same animation twice because I'm pretty sure it's the same animation yeah. with different dialogue later. Yeah, because you're talking about getting ice cream later on. Yeah. <laughs> but here you have your sycophants. One is a translator and one, I don't know what he does. No. And then Heavenly Peter. And before you can kill him, because you've murdered too many people, well, a knight shows up and our character says, oh, you're going to stop me? You and what army? Me and my army. And then it pans back and there's like a thousand guys standing there. (laughs) And then you're crucified. Yeah. And then to make the credits roll, you have to scream. So every nail you click on or the other person being executed, (laughs) each scream moves the credits one page at a time. (laughs) And I believe it says something like, oh, no, I've written it down. That's the end in parentheses. You didn't win. Yeah, and you get that, you get that for every ending as well, pretty well, much. Well, I think ending, I think ending two, two maybe. says you didn't win. I think ending three says you won, sort of. <laughs> no no real good ending. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a fitting end, because who she is, That's uh, her name is Bellona, and Bellona is the goddess of war. That's who That's who she is, and you can see her in the in the gallery. Because that's a great gallery. They, they, they did that again, where you can go in and you can see all the paintings that they've used in the game. It's my favorite room in the whole game. I spent way too long in there looking at every single painting. And again, like the music, if you want to know, oh, where, where did this one come from? Who painted this? I think I recognize it. You can find it in the museum. No doubt it's by some Dutch guy. <laughs> it's just like 80% Dutch painters in there. 
they were they were well in, in, into all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, so she's she's actually the goddess of of war, the Roman goddess of war. And there's like a couple of other ones that go along with her, like Minerva, and they look the same. They look almost like sisters, but they're not to be confused. But there's this whole kind of pantheon of these women. Um, and yeah, so she's I mean, it's, it's more fitting then that she goes around just murdering everything. <laughs> that should be the good ending. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoyable. I mean, that was only, I think, 45 minutes or something. I was going to say, that's almost a speed run. You just murder, 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 dead, done. I did look off to, like, outside of the gate, there's the cemetery area and mm. there's the other area with the crucifixions. I did check those out. Yeah. Because I did want to play the game. I did check out the cemetery off to the right. I did check out the crucifixions off to the left. So I did try to play the game a bit. But definitely you get hindered by the fact that once you murder the first person, yeah. you close off maybe two thirds of the game. Mm. Or at least this level, this part of the level. So, yeah, after that, I, was, I, I don't know what to do. Nothing I do seems to be working. Yeah. <laughs> Just kill, 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 and done. So let's get into my second playthrough where I tried not to kill anyone. Before you do that, did you kill the guy sleeping in the coffin? Yeah. It's pretty horrific. <laughs> <laughs> I was shocked when I, when I did that because that, that was one of the guys I had to kill for my serial killer achievement. And it's like, it's a guy sleeping in a coffin. If you try and stab him, you're like, well, he's already dead. So you poke him in the face, he wakes up, and then you just stab him. He's like, he's definitely dead now. Exactly. <laughs> So in the second playthrough, so here's where we really get into the game part of it. As I said before, you get the scissors, you give them to the lady, and you said get socks and give them to the other guy. So you can get three out of three, which I didn't know. When I got to the village, the second part of the game, and the gatekeepers, this time, instead of saying I'm going to kill Heavenly Peter, I said, I'm on a pilgrimage. And they said, oh pilgrimages finished six weeks ago or something <laughs> i'm assuming there's no right answer to get in like i live here did you try all no, of them yeah I, I think i think i tried all of them but yeah you just got you've got to get the rube the rube visa yeah the gullible rube visa that's what it is <laughs> the donkey lady says oh i've got a merchant pass i can get in you can sneak into the back of the cart but I need a wheel, and my donkey is unhappy. Yes. <laughs> Which we can fix by going way to the left and in the back. So you go past the lady selling t-shirts at the crucifixion. Uh, the t-shirts say, perished but still cherished. From her, you can get a head, yeah. severed head. She's got five around. When you ask why do you have those, she says, oh... She says, I use those for reference, for making the shirts. There's a skunk who will come into play later. Yeah. There is something that I missed here completely, which is the hot posty post. Oh, right, yeah. I just missed it. I missed that I could click on it. And it was very frustrating because that's something I had to use to walk through for. And it seems so obvious so now. There's a guy on a wheel up there. Yeah. Like, yep. <laughs> if you go to the back, there is... A man tied to a tree, an archer up on a hill, two torturers roasting a man over a fire, and <laughs> a loot player with a metronome. Yes. Gnome, G-N-O-M-E. It's very Terry Pratchett, that. <laughs> Just, that one got me. That one really got me. I was not expecting the metronome. Yeah. A couple different ways that you can do this. For my serial killer one, I had to do this, where I have to kill the archer, kill the guy in the tree, kill the guy being tortured. I did not do that even in the second playthrough because I did the archery thing first. And yeah, once, you can't kill him after that. Once you see how beautiful of an archer he is, you can't kill him. <laughs> I needed to walk through to even tell me that I could. I just assumed that I couldn't. You get the apple give the arrow back to the archer because and i'm not sure why maybe you can help me with this i put a hole in the book later mm -hmm. did you need to do that it's a it's for an achievement is it if you okay. if you you replace the apple with the, the book. book and then you get him to shoot the book it's just an achievement okay 
Because I thought I really missed something. No. I thought I was supposed to put something in there. I think the achievement says holy book. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to use it any time where it seemed like the Bible might be fitting. Right, right. <laughs> like later the sacrifice, I'm like, oh, I've destroyed the book. Maybe mm -hmm. that's what they need. No. With the hot posty post wheel, still with the man on it. Yes. Complete with man attached. Yes. And the apple, you can make the donkey happy, you can fix the cart, and the donkey lady says, ha ah, sucker, <laughs> and takes off, which is a common theme in this game. Yes. If you go off to the cemetery, like you said, there's the man sleeping, he's holding the book, he won't give it up, I'm cuddling my book, unless you can get me something more cuddly, I'm not going to give it to you. As well as a man talking to his naked friend, saying, why won't you go home? Stop hiding from your wife. Wouldn't it be better to do practical jokes with your pants on somewhere else? <laughs> and then a boulder falls out of the sky and crushes them both. And blocks off the cave we're going to need later. Yeah. From there, we can go back now, though. Uh, as soon as the donkey lady leaves, the gatekeepers laugh at us, say, Oh, we didn't know you were so gullible. Gullibles we need. Come inside. Yeah. When you come inside now, instead of all the doors being locked, the four doors are now open. There's a huge group of people having a feast, celebrating. There's music. It's an incredibly different place than it was before. Yeah. With the street magician <laughs> yes. performing. The street magician who needs purple grapes mm. or purple berries, which I couldn't pick before because, oh, I don't want my fingers to get sticky. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, same with the socks, exactly the same. Like, you just, not yet, can't do it yet. And I think you actually need to go to the Basilica anyway to talk to them because you're basically going to get the dialogue that is the next fetch quest. Oh, we all want jewelry. We don't need money. We have all the money in the world. <laughs> but we could be bribed with some fancy jewelry and a little boy with rosy cheeks and a perk bottom. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> no comment. Are you sure you wouldn't rather have some jewelry? Nope, nope. <laughs> I know what I want. We'll get into why later. <laughs> but yeah, it's a very odd choice of humor to throw in there, but fine. Out in the main area, we have... So going kind of left to right on the left is the area where you go in there are very happy dressmakers. There's an incredibly beautiful woman who just says, stop looking at me, stop ogling me. <laughs> she doesn't really do much. The composer who is depressed because he's too successful. Such a shame. <laughs> and feels just not meaningful. Then when you go to the back and around, you see a woman playing a cello upside down. <laughs> Don't know why, that's just Joe Richardson humor, I think. Or it's probably from a real painting, to be honest. It's probably some weird painting. Because he definitely finds the weirdest parts for that. Yeah. There's the flute player around the crucifixions who has a foot in a bucket yeah. and just hopping around with that. <laughs> and and he points out these things in the dialogue when you look at these things. Mm -hmm. Well, that seems strange, but okay. Like when we talk to the magician, why do you have that boy in the leash, though? <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about that don't yeah, worry about yeah. that you have some man on a cow I think mm -hmm. if you slap the cow then they jump over and you can jump out and you fall in the river I guess mm -hmm. you spit out a fish and the trick is to kill it quickly yeah. otherwise it gets away it took me three times to get that right <laughs> because the first time I was Doing what I always do with adventure games. Oh, I'm going to look at it first. Yeah. Oh, it's a fish. And as soon as you look, yeah, it's gone. <laughs> and I think the second time I tried to grab it with my hand, bloom, gone. Yeah. You actually have to stab it. So it did take me three tries to get that one. The next door over is your gallery. Mm -hmm. So many things to see here. Yeah, tons. And it's done very, very well. I love... Richardson throwing in the humor of what our character or what our character references as, oh, 
two men doing argy bargy behind the, <laughs> yeah. the sea, as opposed to the actual title. Yeah, I, w- w- when you're hovering over it first, yeah, it's like an owl trying to feed kittens mice or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then if you want to go into the back room... Oh, no, you're not allowed in there. No, you don't want to see anything in there. No, no that's awful. Terrible. It's, it's awful. It's what we do to get money to keep this place running. And then when you finally get in there, it's the Kickstarter room. There's clearly like a Kickstarter award for this. Fantastic. Yeah, it's great. I wonder how much that actually costs because there's not many people in that room. There's only about, what, 12 paintings in there. And Joe Richardson is one of them. So I wonder, the 11 backers, I wonder how much you had to fork out to get a picture in the museum. I'm sure. Quite hefty. I'm sure you can find out, too, mm. if you really want to. You can know. just go, it'll, be, it'll still be on the Kickstarter. You can exactly. just look it up, yeah. The next room over, you have the girl with the amethyst earring. So it's obvious you're going to have to do something with her. A woman playing a harpsichord. If you go into the room on the right, there is the character known as the library, who is made of books. Yeah. We can't get the crowns he's holding yet. We can't borrow any books. We can't do anything yet because we need to get the book and at this point we don't have it yet off to the left there is a whole room of lawyers and relatives trying to steal the inheritance of a dead woman who even one of them is trying to pull the ring off of yeah which is jewelry and i thought we were going to be getting that ring and we did not the only guy you can really talk to in here is the black sheep of the family she left me nothing he gets high on snuff yeah but it's laced with something so you can get a bit of snuff from him which i'm assuming much like four last things there are a few things like this and the bugs you can get as many as you need in case you'd use it in the wrong place or Mm. do something incorrectly i don't think you'd probably need to do this one twice but i bet it's great to do it if somehow you made it work right I thought it'd be interesting though to go around and I never thought to do that. Like just go around and give that to everybody and see what kind of new dialogues you get. Most of the time it just wouldn't let you. Okay. And say, oh no, I think these guys are dangerous enough without uh-huh. giving them <laughs> This guy will give you a treasure map, which he said, I've already dug. I didn't find anything. So now when you go back out in front of the gate, you see a hole and there's nothing in it. Yeah. This is one of the most clever puzzle parts of the game, I think. Yeah, I did not expect that. (laughs) And I also didn't put it together because, unlike you, I looked at the gallery went, yeah, that's nice, back out. (laughs) Everybody does that. That That's weird. There are two puzzles that you need to solve in Mm. here. In the next room, sort of the one on the right side of the screen, is... The talent show with a really tall lady, or the lady with really long legs, legs, I think it says. And you can talk to her about what you need to do. So once you've done that, now you're set to really run through the game. If you want to win the talent contest, since we just talked about that one, to get her necklace that gets passed on year after year, you have to go to the very left door, get the weavers to make you a beautiful dress you go to the composer he'll just give you a song and you have to catch that fish because one of the judges loves the smell of fish as you do which is that the one that i got right away when i went in and i tried it oh i got two nine two (laughs) no fish lady loved me yeah (laughs) because i had the fish the song is tricky. Yeah, yeah. It's you've just got to read the sheet music though. You just got to you got to read the sheet music and then write it down. You have to write it down, but you also have to be very quick about choosing the next lyric. Oh, it's on a timer. It is. Ah, okay. So I was constantly not getting it fast enough. I didn't notice this time because, like I said, this time I played it, I was uh, kind of strapped for time, so I, I just did the walkthrough and I just like one, three, one, four, two, two, one, four, done. <laughs> Which he put very nicely in the walkthrough. I saw that after. (laughs) (laughs) I was a little confused. Here's one thing that I was very confused by, which is the dress. Okay, how so? You pick up the dress, but you never get to put it on. It just automatically goes on when you go on stage. That was a little confusing to me. Yeah, just just by having it. 
You, I was looking at the walkthrough you. just to say, well, how do I put on the dress? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> how do I make that work? Yeah, once you get that, though, boom, jewelry. Here's one thing I did. Did you ever try killing the lady with long legs? Yeah. You get basically the same reveal. Mm. It's actually three people <laughs> on each other's shoulders. That was the, the gimmick. That was the trick. That's yeah. how they went. Out of here, Victor, or whatever his name <laughs> is, and they run away. A very nice thing, though. This one and the guy sleeping in the coffin, if you go to kill them, your character in text will say, well, I don't know, that no murder thing seems pretty serious. Cough, cough. Maybe you should... <clears throat> cough. Save your game. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciated that. Yeah. It's a very short game. We probably don't need more saves, but I would have liked more than four. Yeah, Just... It was like four. Is it three plus an autosave? Or is it four plus the autosave? It's four plus the autosave. Right. Which is fine. And once you know your limit, you can work around that. Mm -hmm. And none of the game is long, so it's not that big of a deal. But me being the safe scummer that I am. <laughs> and where obviously that first run through where I killed someone and then most of the game was closed off to me. I was pretty worried about right, everything right. else. If, I make, a, if I make a mistake here, is that am I just locked out again getting the same ending? And then I have to start over again. Mm. Yeah. But I appreciate that warning. So with that, uh, next up is the magician. So you give him the grapes and he's going to run off. This is a steady thing. You get an achievement each time you deal with the magician. Yeah. So you have the first time where he will run off. Then you're going to find him in the cave. You both push and now the boulder can be moved. This opens up a whole new area for you. Mm -hmm. He says, oh, the boy is in the cave. And he actually does leave the boy in the cave. So now you can just pick him up. In the cave, there is a barrel full of bugs, which apparently eat flesh, but not our characters. I guess because she's got metal Oops. gauntlets. Yeah. You've got the room full of demons, they call themselves. They all look like anthropomorphic, well, animals. You know? yeah. <laughs> they're, they're all, but they're not just anthropomorphic. They are walking around, moving. I say moving, like no. not yeah, really yeah, moving. Yeah. They're standing there yeah. looking like human forms of animals. So you have every bird with hands and writing stuff. You've got the cat choir at the bottom. <laughs> the Goat man off to the left. And in here is a clam, which is where they get their pearls that they eat, that the devil will leave them. But they did something wrong and they can't find the right sacrifice to get the devil to like them again. So outside where you find the little boy and you can put him in your inventory. I thought I was going to have to drag him around the whole time. Oh, <laughs> you can keep putting things on the altar and trying and trying. And I should have just found this one on my own. I shouldn't have even needed the game to hint me. The game hinted me. Mm -hmm. And also, I used to walk through because I just didn't quite get it. And I was getting a bit annoyed. It's very funny. You put the wrong thing. You go and you talk to the bird clerk. The bird rings the bell. The <laughs> devil comes in. You get sad trombone music. And then its butt blows a raspberry, basically, because it has a face. Yeah. And then when, I, when you see that character, you're like, oh, I recognize you. You're from Rock of Ages. <laughs> it gets a bit old when you've done it, say, I don't know, with everything in the game like <laughs> yeah. I have. I did try the head, but it's not a head. It needs to be a skull. Yeah. You can figure it out if you use the riddle and go through the gallery. Mm -hmm. That's how I did it. So you actually solved this one then? Yeah. Because when I was looking at that riddle, it's like, it's one of those classic, it's like, there's four in, in Michelangelo and there's one, but there's only two in this. And I was like looking for letters of the alphabet, of course. And then, no, it's not, it can't be letters of the alphabet. And then what's the only place it could be? Ah, the gallery. And then you look in, it's like, ah, it's the recurring theme. It's a skull. You need a skull. Okay. But getting the skull was a pain though, because I put, I put the thing in and it's like, oh, it's only half eaten. Yeah. And then I spent, <laughs> I spent hours walking around like how do i get the rest of this off you didn't it's like, just put it back in no and at, cause, at least that one i knew because yeah. i was like no because it's like you put it in okay but no you got to do it twice right uh, since when has that ever happened in a, in a point and click adventure game <laughs> it's like you do it it happens it's the first time okay twice right, i'll remember that for uh death of the reprobate joe yeah i'm sure that this has probably been done before listeners 
If you know of a point-and-click adventure where you had to do the same thing twice, let us know. I'm guessing there's a huge list. That's probably a massive list. <laughs> yeah. So with the skull, that's the thing. It's like, uh, I tried putting the skull with everything, things that made absolutely no sense. Why did I not put it in there when that guy warned me, it'll eat your flesh off? Right, right. So I should have just been able to guess through this one. Very annoyed at myself that I didn't just guess this one mm. or shove my way through as I would with most any other adventure game. Yeah. Try everything everywhere. Yeah, exactly. When you do that, though, then you will get the pearl, which you can trade to the girl with the amethyst earring. Yeah. Obviously, she's going to get her pearl. But then... <laughs> She'll pop out from behind the curtain. Like, the whole time, she'll, I just don't feel myself. I don't know who I am. What am I as a character? You give her that, and she goes, oh, of course, the girl with the pearl earring, of course. And then she tells some guy, let's go. And she's been on a sled the whole time. <laughs> she just, like, pushes her out the door. Her character says, what? There's a guy there the whole time? <laughs> <laughs> so, great. That all works pretty well. If you're not an idiot like me and you actually either solve the riddle or just try the thing that seems pretty obvious. With the bugs, though, you can get the skunk yeah. to follow you. It won't follow you everywhere. There are some places it won't go. But it definitely follows you into the room with the lawyers. You push on it. It lets off a what they call like a gaseous fart or something. <laughs> They say, open the window, so now you can get the key. The key is for the really clever map puzzle, which I just didn't quite get. I thought, oh, I'm going to have to find a way to make the secret map look different. Because it keeps saying things as you look at it. Like, it looks like it's backwards. It looks like it's missing things. Mm. I was thinking back to Four Last Things with the painter, thinking, oh, I'm going to have to have somebody paint in something or... I'm going to have to do something else with it. But no, it's very clever. Go to the gallery, find where this one came from, and just touch it on the secret place. Yeah. Pops open. Now you've got... A safe. A safe. So open that with the key. This gives you more jewelry to take to the <laughs> to the bribery station. But that, that animation, when you get the key, that's when you get one of those, like, God animations where it goes up into the sky and you got the two cherubs and God. So God basically is Joe Richardson. <laughs> it's like, man, did you, see, did you see that animation? That was terrible. It's like, come on, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> no, it was pretty bad. <laughs> oh, well, to be honest, I know it was that bad. I just thought it'd be really funny to have that joke yeah. because I used to use this software. Like, you thought a joke about, like, a 16-year-old <laughs> yes. bit of software would be funnier than actually having a decent animation. Yeah. Yeah, I did. <laughs> and then he, like, calls out some code, like, for the actual program code, yeah. which takes you back down. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't know how many animations like that are in the game. I think I only found two. I think I only found two of those as well, but they're both funny. Yeah, they're great. Oh. A breaking the fourth wall joke? Yeah, the Steam reviews are going to love that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's fair. I think a lot of, for me, I see a lot of RPG Maker games doing that. And if I play around with one, I probably would too. Yeah. That's kind of part of the genre, I think. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, I think it's a trope that's maybe been a bit overused. But in here, it feels... Very fitting, and I love it. Yeah, it's done really well. This is this is why we can't find a publisher. <laughs> <laughs> we also now need to deal with the magician again, correct? So we've helped him escape from the cave. The magician is now being crucified. We need to get a pair of pliers. I think he's crucified first, isn't he? Because he's Jesus. So he's he poisons the guy. They crucify him for it, and then he ends up in the cave, and we roll the stone away. It's the story of Jesus, basically, isn't it? So, yeah, he's crucified first, and we get the pliers. Is he? Okay. Because yeah, then he hides in the cave. He's like, I had to hide away. And okay. then, okay, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, and then he just vanishes. Then he's then he is going after that. But yeah, so well, he the, doesn't vanish because there's a part where know, he becomes Jesus. He's back in the square, isn't yeah, he? And yeah, and people are listening to him. Yeah. All right. Well, let's deal with the crucifixion one. He needs pliers, which you get <laughs> by giving the metronome. The laced snuff, yeah. he goes too fast, 
the torturers start really spinning that guy really fast so he throws up the pliers, I guess. Yeah. You can also get the pliers by killing the guy. It's just performing surgery. <laughs> <laughs> you just cut him in half, and the torturer will say, oh, you could have just waited. We would have told you a really interesting story about it. Yeah. Well, can you tell me now? No, I'm not going to give you the satisfaction. We're going to tell a murderer yeah. of that. Which, honestly, the story's not that interesting. <laughs> it's just like the guy stole pliers and then ate them to try to get away with it. <laughs> I should try to pass a pair of pliers. Yeah. This is another time where you had to do something first before you could actually interact with it. That is the skeleton, where we have the bit of dialogue saying, what actually makes it a skeleton? It's just a pile. Does it have to be laying in order in order to be a skeleton? <laughs> so before you can even try to talk to it, and the pile of bones will say, I can't talk to you. I'm a, I'm a pile <laughs> of bones. But now you can actually grab it, but you couldn't yeah. before. So the I'm pretty sure that this... You're right. The curse fiction does happen before. Because... You have to do this. The magician will say, okay, close your eyes and I'm going to do a trick. Yeah. And that's when he runs to the boulder. You're right. With the lamb we got off of the altar, mm -hmm. we can give that to the sleeping guy in the coffin. Well, okay, he's pretty cute. And the <laughs> lamb will be licking him and it's very adorable. Unless you kill him, then it's less Not. adorable. <laughs> yeah, you can get the book. Take the book to the archer, put it on the guy's head, have him fire if you need the achievement. Yep. But the book is really just to trade in for the library. He blows out the candle. He will give you one of the crowns that's been left behind. You can take that to the scholar. So I think we now have all the things that we need. You go to the cardinals. You give the... Oh, wait, where did we get the brooch? The safe. Ah, that's right. Okay, so with the brooch that was missing an amethyst, you can now put the amethyst in the inventory onto the brooch. The, o the other... only combination inventory puzzle that they've got in the whole game, I think. Which they will say, if you go to the Cardinals and you try to give it to them, they will say, what? You're trying to give us broken jewelry? <laughs> because I tried. <laughs> I definitely tried. One scholar is happy. He has a crown to cover his bald spot. The man who wanted the little boy, we find out, <laughs> this really long story about, oh, I didn't raise my son properly. I was drunk and I let things spiral out of control. So I want another chance to raise somebody in need. <laughs> so it ends up being a sweet story, but why does it matter if he had a perk bottom? <laughs> <laughs> That's just to fool us into thinking he's doing naughty stuff. Yeah. You give the necklace and the brooch to the Cardinals. Then I'll let you in. As you said before, when we get to Heavenly Peter, you look up and they now say, oh, I'm sure that person won't do anything bad. Let's go get some ice cream. They take yeah. off. You can talk to Heavenly Peter. He speaks a different language, but his translator, the <laughs> weird guy, I think is in the first game. Maybe. Yeah, I don't remember. Who seems to have sort of a galaxy of stars behind him mm. is translating. He's translating and says, all your different options. <laughs> I don't know how he does that. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. But the bottom one is, I could bribe you. And all the others are basically, do you want to die? Yeah. <laughs> yippee ki -yay. Another one. Like, mm. yeah. So, luckily, had saved just before this. So, I could easily get both endings and get both achievements then. But kill him. And you go back then to Immortal John, who's now become the villain of the piece, as he admits himself, well, peace and goodwill only got us so far. They needed a ruler. <laughs> and then our character will say, oh, does that mean killing is back on the table again? Yeah, yeah. They gave me a birthday party and the, the jello wasn't wobbly enough and... <laughs> the balloons weren't inflated enough or something <laughs> lame like that. And our character does not care just as long as they can kill. And this is my favorite ending because then you just run through parts of the first game, killing <laughs> all the <laughs> annoying characters and weird things from game one. Brilliant. And it's, it's so brilliant. I love it. And this is what pushes the credits through on this one is each 
kill mm-hmm. moves another page forward. You can even kill the new Pi King, which is, I think, the last right, one. Right, yeah. Love that. It's brilliant. It's the way it started. It's the way it ends. The other ending is to take the bribe. And if you take that bribe, you basically are being very coddled, very pampered by of. cherubs. Yeah. Which you can burp and fart on. Yeah, and, and that's, that's what, what advances the credits. <laughs> and that's the game. Mm. And uh, that's pretty much everything. I did use a walkthrough a couple times. Uh, yeah, the skull one I needed. The the fish one I think I needed because I had already seen it twice. But when I saw it say, get the fish, I was like, oh, okay. I don't even need to know how. It's the only thing I haven't tried with the fish. Yeah. I didn't know if I had enough fish smell just by having it in my mouth twice already. <laughs> but I assume not. I assume you need that. But that's it. Very straightforward. Very... And very contained this time. I felt there was, less, there was less screens, but it felt like more game almost than Four Last Things. Something about it just felt much more I don't know, linear. T- tighter for me, definitely. Yeah. I think that this one is a better game. I think, though, the experience is not going to be quite as exciting because the first time was all about, oh, look at what he's done with the art, look how mm. he's animated it. Some of the puzzles were more... more. I would say, puzzly, yeah. Yeah, I, <laughs> that's what I was going to say, but I was like, I'm not going to say that. I'll let you say yeah. that, certainly. Yeah, the paintings, the statue, there are a number of things that felt a bit more... Oh, we have to really think this one through. Yeah. But I don't mind. It is still a point and click game, which I always say if it's point and click and there's inventory involved and what goes to what needs to be placed or interacted with each thing on the screen, to me, it feels like a puzzle game. And I love it. And this one, yeah, I would play this one again. In fact, I would think. I'd play again, even though I've 100%ed it, I'd go back and play it again. It's just fun. It's almost like having a short movie that mm-hmm. is very funny and you want to watch it again. It's kind of like Chucho, right? Yeah. I would play that one again, certainly. And Yeah, it's got replay value because of it. It's kind of paradoxical when you think about it. It's like, oh, you know, we want a game. When we buy a game, we want it to be a certain length. But in this case, it's like, it's better that it's shorter. Yes. Because I can play it again and know it's not that long and I'll have fun playing it again. It's great. It is, so the 10 bucks, I think, is great value for money, even though it's maybe three hour, maybe a three or four hour game. I agree. And I look forward to the next one. And honestly, I will be jumping on day one for the next one as well. Gaps filled and more gaps created. 